Okay, okay, here we go. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Okay, is that better, everybody? Okay, we have a little glitch, but anyway. Um, welcome. Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Augusta, where we return together again to celebrate and honor our gift of beloved community. Let us keep in mind that here in the CSRA, we reside on the lands of the Westo people, the Savannah Shawnees, and the Yuchi peoples of the Muskogee Confederacy who lived in sacred reciprocity with this small part of the earth for centuries before it was colonized by European people. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Cheryl Martin. I'm the worship host for today and I will be co-creating this service together with Reverend Nick and our music director, Joseph Patchen, as well as our tech deck folks. And with all of you, we shape this moment into holiness, into wholeness together. Whether you attend in person or virtually via Zoom, you're more than welcome here. If you're joining us via Zoom this morning, I'd like to invite folks to stay on the call for at least a few minutes following the service so you can say hi to each other and have some of your own fellowship time. If visiting in person, please fill out the blue card in the seat par pocket nearest you. Either put it in the collection plate during the offertory or you can give it to me after the service. This information will help us keep in touch with you and help you be more connected with us. After the service, 
you're welcome to join, stop by the common room for refreshments and conversation. For newcomers, we'll know you by your orange name tag. Whether you're here for the first time or the thousandth, in person or Zoom, I sincerely hope you get what you need today. And here's what's coming up in our shared lives together. We've got quite a bit going on. First of all, there will not be a Monday meditation tomorrow, but if you're interested in that kind of ongoing communal spiritual practice, please know that it happens every other Monday and Chris Garcia does a great job of leading it. We are very excited to announce more details about our upcoming spring auction here at UUCA. As you all know from years past, the auction is only as good as all the amazing services, experiences, and unique gifts that are donated. We could use more donations and your help to make this a success. Please go to the website at tinyurl.com forward slash 2023 auction donation in order to give us details about what you can offer as soon as you can. We also need to start getting a head count for our delicious picnic dinner, so please register for the event at tinyurl.com forward slash 2023 auction ticket. When you register, you can prepay for your dinner and get a slight discount on raffle tickets. To be included with our dinner count, please register by this coming Saturday, April 29th. <clears throat> so be sure to sign up ahead of time. Again, our auction will be Sunday, May 6th at 6 p.m. We hope to see you there. Pardon? Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me on that. Um, finally, if you haven't heard, we have four brand new UU Youth Camps coming this, this summer. If you have kids or friends with kids, please look into it. You can learn more at uuaugusta.org slash faith formation miniseries. Desria C., our faith formation manager, is planning some excellent programs. And now, with that being said, let us now into, into our time of service. Robin Wall Kimmerer, in her seminal work, Braiding Sweetgrass, says, the organic symmetry of forms belongs together. The placement of every leaf, the harmony of shape, speaks their message. Respect one another, support one another, bring your gift to the world and receive the gifts of others, and there will be enough for all.
Robin Wall Kimmer. Robin Wall Kimmer says ceremony focuses attention so that attention becomes intention. If you stand together and profess a thing before your community, it holds you accountable. Today, we practice a ceremony of reciprocity first with our human kin by celebrating the folks who have gifted us with their official membership. Because this is a membership ceremony, I've invited Dee Medley, who is the membership team lead, to help out. We have 11 new members to celebrate, all of whom have joined since our last new member ceremony, which was only in September. Though some weren't able to join us in person today, I'll call each of their names so that we can celebrate them all. Donde Coder, I believe will be on Zoom. Nancy Fulton. Up, you may come you. forward. We have something for you. Matthew Maurer. Who is in the nursery right now. Who is in the nursery right now. Okay. Dominic Beckham. Lynn Dracus C. La Dracus C. I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name. Lena Bracci. I know you're here. Oh, here's, here's Matthew Maurer. Okay. Maxwell Fox. Jenea Filson. Lynn Badger. We have been filling the choir. <laughs> Michael McDonald. Elizabeth Borg. Why don't you all come down here so you can face the front, so you can all see your wonderful yes. faces. As we do each time we celebrate new members, we offer each of you a flower. May each of you continue to bloom as a flower blooms. May you be an integral part of our ever-expanding ecosystem of love, offering life to others as you interact with other pollinators of good faith and love around you. And for those of you who are not here or maybe joining by Zoom, we'll make sure you receive this gift sometime. Careful of the thorns. There are not very many. You can pretend that my puppy has been visiting me. <laughs> Welcome. It's okay if we have a little extra green Welcome. on the floor. <laughs> If you are a new member, if you are on Zoom and you are a new member recognized by this ceremony, please feel free to unmute and speak the words which will appear on your screen along with the folks here in person. Existing congregants on Zoom, please remain muted throughout even when you're reading the, your part of the ritual to avoid too much cacophony. These persons of good faith 
are before us now to proclaim together their decision to formally become part of this religious community. If you could read the words on the screen now. Would you all please rise as you read the next words? We, the members of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Augusta, honor and celebrate your decision to become part of our shared and responsible search for truth, meaning, and justice. And we greet you with joy. Your presence here will enrich us and your offering of self encourages us all toward a grit of greater wholeness in our lives. We covenant with you and with each other and honor our UU values and church mission throughout our time together with integrity. We understand that in officially joining us, our community is forever changed and we embrace you as a part of us here and now, welcome. Bravo. Now, therefore, independently connected, let us be about the great work we share. Let us create beloved community. Let's make some more joyful noise. You may all be seated. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. This is...
Thank you for your generosity. On this Sunday morning, closest to Earth Day, I thought that I would resist what I think is natural to do, especially for people who have some kind of awareness of how things are going for our climate and world. I'm going to resist the urge to talk about all the things that are going wrong. And instead, today, I want to just celebrate nature and practice giving back to nature for all the gifts she has given and continues to give us, including the privilege of breath. There is, in my view, a responsibility for, for us to practice kinship, for us to, to practice kinship with nature through reciprocity. Kinship and reciprocity, two, two ideas that Robin Wall Kimmerer talks about a lot in her book, Braiding Sweetgrass, my favorite book, the text from which all of, the, all of the readings today come, and the only book that I consider to be scripture, for me, and, and right now at least. Because it, it just, it's like this it's perfect kind of seed mix of indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, poetry and just meaningful and compelling storytelling. Robin Wall Kimmer says that we, as humans, have a responsibility to be in reciprocal relationship with all of nature, to live in a gift economy as opposed to a wage economy with, with nature and all her parts, to behave as though we are kin, not just with other humans, but with nature herself, close, intimate, bonded kin, urging us to not just continue amplifying the, the feedback loop of understanding that, that humans are, are above and, and own, even have dominion over everything else, that we have the right to, to demolish the earth for its resources, as opposed to to living in relationship with her and all her gifts. Knowing that, that relationship is what helps us all survive and thrive. The best living example that I believe Robin Wall Kimmer offers of this reciprocal relationship in action is the teaching of plants themselves. For example, the Three Sisters. Who here has heard of the Three Sisters? Only a few hands, okay. So the, for those who don't know, the three sisters are a combination of corn, squash, and beans, all planted together. And this was first utilized by indigenous Americans. They combined these, these three different plants to, to work in relationship with each other, help each other thrive and grow even more than they could alone. And I'm not gonna go into the exact science too much, of how and why they all help each other. Yet, at the very least, you should know that the way that the, the various ways they each interact with the sun matters and their, their unique connections to the soil and the nutrients in the soil, some giving extra nutrients to others that are, are starving for it, they all serve a purpose for the other two as well. They each offer their part in this kind of little community, giving a gift to the other two that only it can give in that relationship. Gifts that allow them all to truly get all they need to survive and thrive. And I think that is something that, that we as humans can learn from these plants. And not just how we interact with other humans, that, that's, a good, that's a good idea too, yet, yet also with all the other non-human people on earth. Let me explain a little bit. I know it's probably going to sound weird to, to folks a little bit. Robin Wall Kimmer, uh, as uh, somebody who comes from the Potawatomi tribe, talks about how in many Western languages, English included, 
we tend to objectify a lot of things. About 70% of our English words are nouns and about 30% verbs. And yet, in indigenous languages like the Potawatomi language, the language of Kimmerer's people, it's the exact opposite. There are about 70% verbs and 30% nouns. And, and with those 70% verbs, there is this, this sense that, that many, many more things that we may see as objects are indeed people. That they have a, a, an isness about them. They, are, they do the work of that thing. People, people with whom we can have relationship and interact. Subjects that give their own unique gifts to the world as part of the ecosystem. Like that, that rock person or that tree person doing rock person and tree person things. There's, there's this animacy to these belief systems that, that tends to help point humans toward right relationship with, with all these other elements of nature and with nature overall. And with that, that understanding, again, we can, we, we can begin to expand the way that we give back to nature for all she does for us. We can begin to truly practice reciprocity by giving back for all the gifts that we receive every single moment that we are alive. And by doing so, we help not just nature, but ourselves too, because we are indeed part of nature not apart from it. With this new yet very old framework that sits well outside dominant culture beliefs, pushing back against it even, we begin to live in right reciprocal relationship. Just as the three sisters, we begin to recognize these other characters in the story of Earth as kin. And by doing so, we might even begin to see more humans as kin. To live in this way, to, to celebrate nature by giving back to her, very much resists the colonizing, capitalistic, supremacist idea that, that everything is something that we can use, that everything is a resource for us to take, that everyone is just there to meet our individual needs without regard for the impact to any body or anything else. Going forward, I urge us as a community to not just mourn the results of that mentality, but resist through celebration, gratitude, and a return of generosity, the beautiful, abundant bounty and, and gifts that remain here in the present. Gifts which are full of life and even full of agency. We celebrate by giving back, by engaging in a gift economy with the earth, with all the other people on earth. Together we push back on an unbelievably strong and dominating force that needs you to just go along with this human-centric individualist mentality for it to survive. And yet, that's the catch-22. That mentality is ultimately going to prevent all of us from surviving. So we resist. And as usual, perhaps the most radical resistance we can offer is active love. We promise to do just that in our new covenant. We promise to love and affirm the planet, celebrating our interdependent wholeness. And as a church, we now practice that in one of many more ways to come. In Braiding Sweetgrass, Robin Wall Kimmerer says, ceremonies transcend the boundaries of the individual and resonate beyond the human realm. These acts of reverence are powerfully pragmatic. These are ceremonies that magnify life. Can we extend our bonds of celebration and support from our own species to the others who need us? To have agency in the world, 
Ceremonies should be reciprocal co-creations, organic in nature, in which the community creates ceremony and ceremony creates communities. And so, may we recreate community with our non-human kin through ceremony. In a moment, we'll ask each of you to come up and take a small cup of wildflower seeds that my kids put together yesterday. You'll hold on to these cups until after the benediction and following the benediction and, and while we sing the spirit of life, we will all walk outside to where the, the, the smallest kid playground used to be because that will be a new, new life-giving garden here at UUCA, starting with these wildflowers. We'll put about half the seeds from the cup into the ground. And then I invite you to take the other half home or wherever you want to go and, and spread these seeds throughout the world. Spreading our gift far and wide. And once outside, the kids will join us for the final bit of our ritual of reciprocity. And if you're a parent and you have a kid in faith formation right now with Desria, I encourage you to grab a, an extra seed cup for them too so they can, they can be involved. When we go outside, Daniel will come with us with his cell phone on Zoom so folks at home can be a part of this time too. Normally, we display the lyrics to Spirit of Life on the screen. If you're new today and don't know the words, fret not. It will be perfectly acceptable for you to walk along with us without singing. We're just happy you're here. After I bless these seeds, please come up and take a cup from Cheryl or me and uh, row by row, starting with the choir members and folks in the center section. Then when they've returned to their seats, continuing with the inside person in the back rows first. And then once you have your cup, circle back around to your row of chairs along the outsides. So it'll, it'll be kind of a, kind of a, almost like a, a flower blooming. I just made that up. <laughs> For the people on the aisle seats uh, in the next row up, uh, we ask that you wait until the last person from the previous row has kind of re returned to their row uh, to avoid some congestion. If there's anyone with limited mobility, raise your hand, please raise your hand, and we'll bring the cup of seeds to you. Is there anybody with limited mo mobility that, okay. Okay. I'll bring one to Sue's too. Okay, got it, Nick. There you go. And now let us bless these seeds. Spirit of life and creation which moves around us and through us, Mother Earth. May these seeds be accepted as a gift to you. May the flowers hiding within them bloom fully. May the act of planting them connect us more deeply with you. May they offer additional life through all our little pollinators that so joyfully and dutifully spread this gift of love further and further acting as the string between each interdependent portion of this web. And may this gift open our senses to all the gifts provided by you each and every moment of our lives and beyond. Would the choir in the center session come forward?
stay up if in body or spirit. Um, and before we head outside I, and be, uh, we begin singing Spirit of Life, Cheryl and I will lead us out to our new garden in two by two rows. Cheryl will lead the folks from this section out that door, uh, including the center folks. And I'll lead the folks from this section out that door, including the choir. Uh, and then once everyone is outside, I'll say a few more words. Until then, please keep these words from Robin Wall Kimmer in mind. I want to stand by the river in my finest dress. I want to sing strong and hard and stomp my feet with a hundred others so that the waters hum with our happiness. I want to dance for the renewal of the world. just surround this area that looks like it's been uh, disturbed. We will stand in a circle around this area. Space, you can just walk right on the dirt itself. You're gonna, you're gonna walk in it anyway. And I, I was told by Desi up to the window that the kids coming out to do. Outside. Either way is fine. And if folks are okay with it, we can. I'm just gonna. I'm just holding the charge here. We can walk right on this too. If you want to come in a little bit, yeah, make sure that sure. it's a good problem to have. Yep. 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 The kids will have a very special role when they come out. They get to do the stomping for the little. Oh my. <laughs> So the nice thing about wildflowers is they're real durable. And they don't they don't care so much what kind of dirt they go into. So we have some clay back here, we have some sand, and they will be just fine with that, with that uh, kind of rounding beneath them. Uh, here come our kids. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Let everybody get a seat. 
You know, parents, parents brought extras also for points. Yeah. Is if you just want to walk right on into the dirt. It's probably one of your favorite places to be. There. <laughs> Just walk right on into this, this dirty area. Yeah, there's four seats. Yeah. Um, seat, all the parents of kids have seats. Oh, awesome. Yes, go find your parent. Grab a seat. Look, so I did that to Charlie and Vivian. Like, like everybody. We've got plenty. Okay. Oh, thank you. So uh, remember, we're going to use. Uh, just about half of the seats we have, and if you pour them all in, that's fine too. Uh, whatever your preference, but if you want to take some of these seats home with you, uh, or if there's a, a you can absolutely plan it at home, yeah. Um, but for now, we're gonna, we're gonna, everyone, in just a few seconds, so in one big kind of whoop of celebration, we're gonna dump our seats under this, this ground that's been disturbed by uh, a tiller and me on Friday, <laughs> and uh, and then the choir will start singing, and as the choir sings, all the kids, I want you to stop in time on, on the ground, okay? All right, kids, sign in, all right? So in one, in one second, you're going to, three, two, one, we're going to dump the seats in this area, okay? Three, two, one. <laughs> all right, it is, it is time for some stomping, y'all. Stop, 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 Garden has begun. Be out of the world and take all that joy with you. He still got some things in today. Come on. Sorry. Um, let's head back inside carefully. Y'all go this 